for this anchor tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sons of God, arise. Sons of God, arise. Sons of God. tonight Jehovah has a final say he made a way where there seemed no way Jehovah has a final say I will make the darkness light hallelujah hallelujah let us continue to keep in the atmosphere tonight hallelujah I will make the darkness light before thee what is wrong I make it right before thee all that battles I will fight before thee, and the high place I will die. Oh, when the I walk is by the way, I lead thee. On the promise of the light, I'll be thee. And the mansion in the sky, I'll be thee. And the high place I bring down. With an everlasting love, I love thee. So 
and with all his winning arts will snare thee, even down to thine old age, I'll bear thee, and a high place I'll bring down. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and we are going up tonight. Hallelujah, we are going up. We are going up, oh, oh, we're, we're going up together, we're going up to prosper, in the name of the Lord, we are going up, oh, oh. Victory. Hallelujah. 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 At uh, this time, we're going to take our offering. And those of you who haven't put in yours yet, it's your privilege now that you can put it in. When we sing that song, you can't be God's giving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be God's giving.
have been to ask God's blessing on the offering. So, Father God, we come before you. We bring this offering, Lord, that you have given back to us. We thank you, Father Lord, for providing for us. We thank you, Father Lord, for being our supplier. We thank you, Lord, because we know that we can depend upon you. And as we bring this offering before you, Lord, we ask your blessings on it. Father Lord, there are those who have to give. There's those who cannot give tonight. But Father, we ask that you will provide means and ways, Lord, that they too will give to this work so that it may prosper and go onward. Father Lord, we ask that you will bless it and continue to help us, Lord, that it will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Let us worship the Lord, hallelujah. Because he's worthy tonight, hallelujah. And before our speaker comes, we're going to sing that song. He is exalted, hallelujah. And after that, we turn over to our Reverend John Hope. Amen. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise him. He is exalted, exalted, and I will.
Are you happy to be in the presence of the Lord? Oh, we thank God for the rich anointing in the worship. Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight, I join with our assistant pastor, Sister Farley, in extending a warm welcome to everyone who have congregated here at the Strowland Christian Mission Church located at Strowland near Beulah St. Philip. And for those individuals who are viewing online, we are going to put our hands together and give you a warm welcome as well. May God richly bless you. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I like to get a little piece more. But nevertheless, we give God thanks. I want to say a special thank you to our worship team under the leadership of Sister Wave and also those who accompanied her, Sister Moesha and Sister Evelyn. We want to say a special thank you to our musicians, our brother Archer, our sister Karen, and tonight we want to put our hands together for the National Coordinator of Music of the Christian Mission, Brother Cameron. Put your hands together for him and accompany him. On the bass guitar is none other than our young brother, Justin Bridgman. Please praise the Lord. And at the back, hallelujah, we want to say a special thank you to our information technology team. And we are especially glad to have Brother Christian Wiggins with us, along with our brother Deshaun and all the technical team from the Strowland Christian Mission Church. We have our Keyshawn on the camera and all those who are playing a vital role tonight. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Are you happy to be here tonight? A warm welcome goes out to Allison. We are glad to have you in the presence of the Lord tonight. What a mighty God we serve. Thanks to the ushers as usual for their efficient job. Thanks to our brother Larry who is always ever present and always ready to assist. God is an awesome God. And I don't have to ask you if you enjoy yourself in the presence of the Lord. Because I certainly enjoyed the word of the Lord, the songs of the Lord from will your anchor hold. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Our God is awesome. The worship was awesome. Everything was awesome. But the greatest is yet to come. And so tonight, it's my pleasure and my privilege to introduce to you the ministering servant of the Lord. And so you know how it is here, we like to give you a little bio. So at this time, I'm going to give you a bio on our ministering servant, none other than our Reverend Frederick Bailey. And after my voice, the next voice you'll be hearing is our Reverend Bailey. Praise the name of the Lord. Reverend Bailey... It's no stranger to us here at Strowland Christian Mission Church. He is the pastor at the Welch's Christian Mission Church located at Baycroft Road, Carnton Village, St. Michael. He is also the circuit pastor for the churches in the city. A teacher for over 42 years, he has a special love for children. He does an excellent job as the national coordinator for our Sunday school department. In addition, he is the facilitator for the planning and education committee. He is also a graduate of the New Testament Church of God Bible School. Reverend Bailey loves the Lord and the work of God. For the past 37 years, he has been married to his lovely wife, Sister Heather Bailey, who is the assistant pastor at the Welch's Christian Mission Church. They are the parents of a very talented musician, Darian, and a beautiful granddaughter, Soraya. We have had the privilege on numerous occasions to listen to this dynamic, spirit-filled minister of God. Tonight, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the servant of the Lord, 
Reverend Frederick Bailey. May he be empowered to preach the word of the Lord. Reverend Bailey, your congregation, may God bless you. Let's bring up the man of God. Praise the Lord. Can we praise the Lord? Come on. We give honor to God. You, you may be seated. Give honor to God the Father, God the Son, God the Blessed Holy Spirit. We give honor to our host pastor, Reverend Jones, Reverend, sorry, Joan Hope. Indeed, it's a wonderful privilege to be here at Jones Village another time. And uh, to be at Stroud Land another time. And uh, to be able to enjoy such wonderful fellowship with the people of God. This evening it's a privilege above privileges, for we recognize that the dead cannot praise him, and they that go down to the pit cannot celebrate his holy matchless name. It is only the living and the living alone that can praise him. And so the psalmist enjoins us to praise him. He said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. He said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. So let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Praise the Lord. I bring you greetings from my wife. She would be here tonight, but she said it's only for Strowland people, so she is not coming. She can watch online. So, um, be that as it may. Nevertheless, we are glad to be here, and we trust that as we worship God together tonight, that he would impart to us from his word. I want to draw your attention tonight for a portion of scripture that God has led on my heart to share with you. It's a familiar portion of God's word, but somebody said that familiar truths are often forgotten truths. And Peter said that his word comes to stir up our pure minds by way of remembrance. So I want to invite you to turn in the word of God to the 10th division of the book of Hebrews. And uh, we are going to be looking at a couple verses there. Hebrews chapter 10. And our text will be from verses 35 to 39. And it reads, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Let's read verse 39 together. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving. Can we read that with a little more vigor if you are really among those? Can we read that with some vigor, and some vitality, some enthusiasm, some zest, some zeal? Verse 39. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Praise the Lord. And this afternoon, I want to speak to you on the theme, an unshakable faith in an unstable world. An unshakable faith in an unstable world. Father, bless your word we have read. 
Indeed, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Father, we pray for attentive ears and receptive hearts. Hearts that are open to what you will say to us tonight. And Father Lord, as you speak, we will listen. And Father, like Samuel, we will be willing to say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Father, we come against every obstacle, every hindrance. We come against principalities. We come against powers. We come against mindsets, oh God. We come against every high thing and every exalted thing. And God, we declare liberty in your house tonight. We declare freedom in your house tonight. For God, your word said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Father, we come against every spirit of heaviness. We come against, dear God and Father, every affliction. And God, we declare, oh God, that your word will be with power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight, before our mind's eye, as I said, we have a familiar portion of God's word in which we are reminded to cast not away our confidence. We are warned not to cast away our confidence because it hath a great recompense of reward. And I hear the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 6, he says, The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Praise the Lord. So in spite of the challenges, in spite of the current difficulties, in spite of the, 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 the challenges and the situations that confront us in life today, amen, our future is bright. The prospects are bright, amen, because God has given us a promise. He has promised us a reward. And if we are true and faithful, we will receive that reward. And tonight, when we look at this scripture, we see here that the Apostle Paul is writing to Jewish believers. He's writing to Christians that were once Judaizers. They were brought up in a certain culture, a certain way, and having heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, they were transformed and changed and they were no Christians. But there were this ever constant struggle with their past way of life in reverting back to Judaism. Although they had received the, the gospel, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, although they had proclaimed faith in Jesus Christ, uh, although they had accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, there was this constant struggle with going back or reverting to their former way of life. And so throughout the book of Hebrews, we see Paul writing to these Christians to encourage them, to preserve, to, um, to endure, Amen. To be patient, to be hopeful in the things of Almighty God. And so, scholars have described this book as the root of the New Testament. Because in this book, it celebrates, amen, the fulfillment of the Old Testament and Judaism. Amen. To an extent that Paul shows the superiority of Jesus Christ over the Old Testament, over the prophets, over the angels, over Moses, over Abraham, all that the Judaizers could boast or think or put their confidence in, Paul was showing to them a better way, a superior way, a greater way, amen, a way, amen, that provided greater prospects and greater benefits and greater dividends than they ever enjoyed under the Judaism system. And so, as we look at this um, book, 
Amen. We, we see the constant urges and promptings of the uh, Apostle Paul. From the very first chapter in chapter 1, we hear him saying that God who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak in times unto the fathers by the prophets have in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Hallelujah. And he went on in verse 3, and he says, Who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Verse 4 says, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So from the very onset, Paul was outlining to the Judy, the the, these um, Christian, these Christian Jews, amen, that they had something better in Christianity. Amen, they had something greater. They had something superior. Amen, they had something that was more enduring, more lasting. Something that you can afford to put your confidence in. Amen, for what you had in the Old Testament, amen, it was ineffective in many ways. It was not um, all that could accomplish what God needed to accomplish. And so he was pointing them to a better way. And as we look at this chapter 10, in verse 19, he says, to them, he gives them two of the prominent um, bases on which they can stand. He said that in verse 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. I tell you, that was a tremendous step for the Jewish Christians. Amen. Under Judaism, they could not enter the holy of holiest. Amen. That was denied them. They did not have that right. The only body who could go into the holy of holies was the high priest. Amen. Once a year. Hallelujah. But under the new dispensation, amen, every man Jack had the opportunity to enter the holy of holies by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Are you with me tonight? Are you hearing me tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. They now have boldness. Listen, not even the high priest had boldness. They had to go in, Sister Farley, with fear and trembling. They had to go in, amen, like a, a mouse. They had to be timid because if you did not go in there, having first offered sacrifice for your sins and the sins of the people, you were in trouble. Hallelujah. But since our high priest Jesus has come and has made that sacrifice of sin, hallelujah, we can enter by the blood of Jesus. And we can come with confidence. We come with boldness. Amen. Especially we as a Gentile people, we can get past the Gentile courts. Can get past the Gentile courts. Much more the, 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 um, the inner circle, the inner chamber. Hallelujah. But we are glad tonight we don't have to depend on any high priest to go in for us. We don't have to come with any bulls or any goats or any heifers tonight. We just have to enter in by the blood of Jesus. And this was a tremendous step for those Jewish believers because they were accustomed to year after year, amen, going up to the temple and depending on the high priest, amen, carrying up their goat or their bullock or whatever and offering it as a sacrifice. The high priest then taking the blood into the holy of holies. But now, done away with, you can come with boldness. The hymn writer said, enter by the blood 
of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have free access. Amen. No longer having to wait on any high priest to go in on our behalf. And not only that, but secondly, the next premise on which the Paul could have encouraged them is that they have an high priest over the house of God. Verse 21 says, and I should also reinforce in verse 20 says, by a new and living way. Jesus opened a brand new way, a super highway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where you didn't have to wait on a particular day of the year to come. Amen. But you can come whenever you want. Amen. You can come with boldness. It's a living way. It was a new way. It was a different way than in the past. Hallelujah. You can come by a new and living way which have consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. Hallelujah. So they could come with boldness. They can come unashamedly. They come without timidity. They can come, amen, with an assurance of faith. Hallelujah. And then secondly, he said to them, you have an high priest over the house of God. And we might not understand and appreciate the high priest because as Gentiles, we would not have been accustomed to a high priest. But to them, the high priest was the in all and be all. Because why the high priest represented God before them and represented them before God. The high priest, amen, was the one who, who, who was over the house of God. And his role as the high priest was a significant and a respected one. He was seen as the supreme religious leader. So everything points to him. He was responsible for overseeing the other subordinate priests. He was also responsible for representing the people before God. And most importantly, for offering the sacrifices on behalf of the people. And so, as I said, he was the one who went into the Holy of Holies. So he was revered. He was looked up to. Amen. But Paul says, we now have an high priest over the house of God. And if we go back to chapter 5, we are reminded, amen, about our high priest. Amen. In verse 5, he says, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee, as he have said also in another part, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And verse 8 says, Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obeyed him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Mel Melchizedek. Hallelujah. And so this evening, we have him to be our eternal high priest. Those high priests, they were changed year after year. They died, they grew old, they died, and they had to be replaced. Those high priests, they had to offer sacrifices daily. Those high priests, amen, after a time, they began to take their duties and their responsibilities for granted, and the privilege became abuse. Oh, but the word of God says that our high priest, this man that because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priest, priesthood. He says, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth. To make intercession for them. Verse 26 of chapter 7 says. For such an high priest became us. Who is holy. Harmless. Undefiled. Separate from sinners. And made higher than the heavens. 
who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the sins of the, of the people. For this he did once. He offered up himself. So we have an incredible high priest. A high priest that is far, far greater, far superior. And these um, Jewish Christians did not recognize. And so Paul had to bring it to their attention. You not only have boldness to enter, amen, but you also have a high priest. Hallelujah, that is greater than any high priest. A high priest that can be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. A high priest that was in all points tempted like as you are, yet without sin. Hallelujah, an eternal high priest. And so he invites them on the premise, these two important premise or bases. Amen. He gave them some gentle exhortations. He said to them, let us do what? Draw near with a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Hallelujah. Paul wanted to encourage these Jewish Christians, he wanted to inspire them, to motivate them, to draw near, to get closer to God. Amen. To experience what you have. Amen. You see, because the tendency is there to revert when you don't understand and appreciate what you have. Amen. It provides an opening for the enemy. And then these um, Christians were subject to great persecution. Persecution. They faced a lot of persecution. They face difficulties and hardships. And Paul reminded them of this in this chapter as well. Amen. And they were able in the past, you know, to resist the persecution and to stand in the faith. Amen. But as time went on and the persecution increased, their resistance, amen, decreased their faith. Amen. And there were those who came to the point of casting away their confidence. Tonight we are talking about an unshakable faith in an unstable world. Hallelujah. He told them not only to draw near with a true heart, but he also told them to hold fast the profession of their faith without wavering, which is vitally important in an unstable world. We have to be able to hold fast. Amen. Jesus and Paul, the same Paul in chapter 12, he's talking about a time when everything that will be shaken will be shaken. And over the last few years, we have seen things shaken that we never thought would have been shaken. We see economies being shaken. Amen. We see countries being shaken. We see health systems being shaken. Amen. We see political systems being shaken and shattered. Amen. And the word says that everything that will be shaken will be shaken. And we see that the faith of many believers are also being shaken. Hallelujah. The verse hymn that we started, will your anchor hold in the storms of life. Amen. This is a real issue of our day, amen, an unshakable faith that is going to stand the test of time. Hallelujah. It is all right to sing it in the congregation when everybody is there, amen, but when you have to face the reality of life, when you have to face the prospect of a layoff, when you have to face the prospect of not able to buy and to pay your bills, when you face the prospect of your health being threatened and endangered. Amen. It is going to take something to be able to answer that question. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? Hallelujah. 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 Paul said not only let us draw near, let us hold fast the profession of our faith, but he also said let us consider one another. It is vitally important as believers that we recognize ourselves as a community of believers. That is not we can be isolated and exist and we see the importance of this even in this COVID-19 session. Amen. When churches are closed and we cannot get to church. Amen. We have to consider one another. 
to provoke one another to love and to good works. Hallelujah, because the coming together is important. We don't just come to have a good time and to have fellowship. We come to build up each other. We come to strengthen the faith of each other. We come to motivate each other. And that is why Paul said, when you come, somebody come with a hymn, somebody come with a psalm, somebody come with a testimony, somebody come with a word of knowledge, somebody come, hallelujah, somebody come to build up and edify somebody. Hallelujah. And Paul says we have to consider one another to provoke one another to love and to good works. Hallelujah. We have to be looking out for each other. We have to recognize that we are all organically related. We are a community. We are a family. And what hurts one hurts the other. What one goes through, the other goes through. Amen. Because we are interconnected and interrelated. Hallelujah. And he said, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. And so this COVID-19 experience has caused us to re-examine and to re-imagine, amen, what community, what church is. Hallelujah. We have had to realize that church is not the building. It is not the walls and the benches. Amen. Church is a people. A community of people. Hallelujah. A called out people. And we have to be able to appreciate that fact. Amen. That whether the church are closed, the building it might be closed, but church is not closed. Church is still open. Amen. It has caused us to look at our leadership. Amen. Because we can't wait now for the pastor to do everything. We have to be the priests in our homes. Amen. We have to be able to intercede for our families. We have to be able to study the word in our families. Amen. Because the pastor is not now out there as we need her. So we've got to look back at our traditional experiences and what we are, have gone through. And so... Paul putting forward all of these issues, and the third one that he put in is in verse 26. He said, he gives them a warning, if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice. He said, well, if, if these other things don't bring you in line, if the fact that you have boldness to enter the holy by the blood of Jesus, if you don't understand the importance of a new and a living way. If you don't understand what it means to have a real great high priest over the house of God. If you sin willfully after that you have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. No more sacrifice for sin. And brothers and sisters, when we look at this passage, Paul says to them in verse 35, don't cast away your confidence. And I want to look at a couple of things that can cause us to cast away our confidence. Because, you know, sometimes we come and we testify, and I believe we are well-meaning. I've heard people testify, there ain't nothing that can turn me back. I've heard people singing lustily, I am determined to hold on to the end. I have heard people testify, amen, I have been in this, 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 this fight for a long, long time, and I ain't seen nothing that can hinder me. He said, if my mother don't go, it don't hinder me. If my father, it don't hinder me. But listen, church, sometimes very simple, little, trivial things. Simple, little things can cause us to cast away our confidence. And I want to identify four things, or four or five things this evening that can cause us to cast away our confidence. One thing is disappointment. Some people become disappointed. You know, sometimes we make people believe, well, if you give your heart to the Lord, Sister Evelyn, everything will be all right. Huh? Everything is going to be, ju just give the Lord a chance, and God is going to bless you. He's going to prosper you. You're going to have success. And everything is going to be 
A-OK and you register, you sign up and you have great expectations that God is going to start blessing you and things are going to be turned around for you. Amen. And the reality is that that is not your experience. Amen. All hell break loose. That state of, you know, disappointed to the extent that they, they don't feel to bother or to worry. Amen. They begin to question their faith. They begin to question whether or not God exists. They begin to re question whether or not the church is real and what we're doing is real. And they become disillusioned. Amen. They, they lose faith. And they, they do not just backslide, but they apostatize. Amen. They, 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 they reject the whole faith and the, the whole thing about God and, and worship and all these things. And they revert. They cast away their confidence. Oh, but we are so glad that there is a remedy, a, a, an antidote for 
disillusionment. Brother Elijah became disillusioned when um, Jezebel told him, look, you're going to be just like these prophets. He ran and he went and sat under a juniper tree and said, look, it is enough now, Lord, let me die. I am the only one left. Let me die. This man that wrought great miracles, this man that did such great work, amen, became disillusioned. John the Baptist, one of the greatest prophets, became disillusioned. Just about John the Baptist asked, are you the one that should come after having proclaimed, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He asked, are you the one that should come or should we look for another? Hallelujah. Listen, disillusionment, people are becoming disillusioned and they are giving up. They are moving away. They are casting away their confidence. Believers, if a time of tall, amen, we need an unshakable faith. It is in these unstable times in which we're living. The pressures of life, the circumstances, all that is happening around us, changes that we never thought that we would live to experience are bearing down upon people and they are becoming delusional having been disappointed and then disengagement people become disengaged they re re remove themselves from involvement in any activity some people's too glad to hear that the church closed that they don't got to come out and go up online some the church open back and they're still online they're still online. Church open back and they're still online. They, they're afraid of, of what happened. They're going to happen at church. But yet they're getting in the minibus and they're sitting down right beside one another. They're going to the supermarket and they're rubbing shoulder with everybody. Amen. They're still going to work. Amen. And doing the work. But when it comes to church, they won't be online. They want to be online. But God wants a people that is involved. Amen. Because listen, this, um, th this, this condition of a world needs to shake us to involvement, to get us engaged in missionary work, in evangelistic work, in outreach. Hallelujah. We can't be satisfied with the status quo. Amen. When there are souls to be saved, when there are those who are dying daily, when we think across the world, the number of persons that have died as a result of this virus, we can't afford to be disengaged. Hallelujah. We can't afford to put missions on the back burner any longer. We can't afford, amen, to not have an evangelistic trust, amen, in reaching the unsaved and the unchurched and the uncultured for God. Hallelujah. We need to be engaged. And Paul says to the church, these believers, don't cast away your confidence because it hath great recompense of reward. Hallelujah. Sometimes we do not seem to understand what God has in mind for us. In Corinthians, he says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered the heart of man what God has in, in mind for us. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. Oh, but we look at the present circumstances and we throw away the long term at the expense of the short term. We look at the short term and things look so, thing, we, we, we don't see any bright future. We don't see any hope. We don't, things look so bad. There's no future. And some people, you know, they're very skeptical. And especially when they see they, what, they, what they're looking at and expecting don't happen. I, I, I remember as a, ch a, a child, I must have said this before, I was still at school. And my father, he had this thing of, of the world going to come to an end. And he, he wanted to stop me from going to school. I said, the world coming to an end. 
We, we you think you will get a job from? Where you think you'll get, you'll get qualifications to get a job? Huh? And he was driving a van at, 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 at Manning, and he wanted me to come and lift boat TV. My mother said no. That ain't happening. And since then, 44 years plus and gone, the world ain't come to an end yet. And another 44, it's possible, could, could come. Amen. Because he says, no man knows the day or the hour. Hallelujah. So we have to occupy until he comes. And Paul said, there's something that we need. We have need of patience or endurance. Hallelujah. I said, brothers and sisters, we need patience. You know, we live in a microwave society. We live in an instant world, instant money, instant coffee. Everything is instant. And so we have lost that ability to wait, to be patient. And one of the toughest things that we can endure is to know that God has made a promise. We are willing to do that, but it looks so far away. We lose patience. Some people got saved and they were excited. You know, Jesus is coming back. Two, three years, five years, ten, and he come back. Yeah, and people get despondent, get discouraged by the way and fall out. We have to have patience. We have to endure. Amen. Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And you know, when you read that, there's something in there that excites me. He says, even the youth shall faint. Father, we don't usually associate fainting with the youth. Youth is a time of strength and vigor and vitality. We think of the elderly fainting. You know, because it's a time of weakness. The bodies, the organs aren't functioning as they used to function. But the word says, even the youth shall faint and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strengths. Hallelujah. We have need of patience that after we have done the will of God, we might receive in other words, brothers, we are waiting and we are working. Yeah. We are occupying. We are not just filling time. We are not just, you know, um, bench warmers and casually waiting for the Lord to return. Amen. We want to be doing the will of God. Amen. We want to be involved. We, we want, want to be engaged. We don't want to be spectators. We don't want to be on the sidelines. Amen. We want to be in the service of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We cannot be just contented anymore with coming on Sunday or Wednesday, amen, and having prayer meeting and having this, amen. We must be engaged. The conditions, the unstable conditions of the world demands that we become engaged in doing the will of God. Verse 37 says, for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. That is a certainty. Just a little while, he that will come, will come. And there's no, it doesn't matter who deny it. It doesn't matter who figure that things are going to continue as there always has been. Amen. The word says, yet a little while, and he that shall come, will come and will not tarry. So don't get tired. Don't get weary. Don't follow, don't get disappointed, don't get disillusioned, don't get discouraged, amen. Don't cast away your confidence. It has great recompense of reward. You know, sometimes our job, on a job, things are rough. Sometimes the children stress out fairly. And if you had your own way, some days you don't feel it, it will go. But when you think that at the end there is that reward at the end of the month, you go on. You go on. You don't feel you will go some mornings, but you still get up and press on. And you go. You do your job. Because you're looking forward at the end. There's a reward. There's a reward awaiting you. So that should be an incentive. Verse 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. 
But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure. Brothers and sisters, we cannot afford to draw back. We need to have an unshakable faith in an unstable world. We need to have a faith that is strong, a faith that is going to stand. Not a talk faith, a real faith. Hallelujah. A proven faith. A faith that, you know, when we, we face the, the, the circumstances of life, that we are going to stand and be strong. We are not going to give in to our feelings or to our fears or to the demands that are around us. A faith like that which the disciples had when they were threatened not to teach or to preach. Amen. They said we can only obey God rather than man. Do what you want, but we are going to obey God. And I like verse 39. He says, but we, but we are not of them who draw back. Can we say that tonight? But we are not of them who draw back. Hallelujah. We are not of them. We don't want to be them that draw back. There's no time to draw back. Amen. This is time to come boldly. This is time to come forward. No going back. Amen. This is time, amen, for engagement. This is time, amen, to show our works by our faith and our faith by our works. Amen. This is time to go forward. Amen. Because behind us is perdition. And we don't want to go back to perdition. We don't want to revert to the past. Amen. We want to go forward. Right? It said, forward still is Jehovah's will. Though the billows may dash and spray with a conquering thread, we'll push ahead and roll the sea away. But we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where do we fit in? Are we those that draw back tonight? Or are we those that believe? to the saving of the soul. It is vitally important to know where we are. I don't know how to emphasize this more, brothers and sisters. In this turbulent, these turbulent times in which we are living, we need to have an unshakable faith, not a top faith. The Bible says in, in Hebrews 11, without faith it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Sometimes we are bombarded with all these conspiracy theories and all kinds of things. We have more prophets now arising than we ever had and everybody prophesying and predicting and prophesying and all kinds of things. And as Christians we need to know what we believe. We need to know that our anchor holds and that it grips the solid rock because I tell you, if you keep listening to some of the things that you read and you hear and you're seeing, amen, your, your, your faith will be shaken. Your faith will be shaken. So we have to make sure that we have that unshakable faith in God. Hallelujah. You know, and it doesn't come by the pastor praying for you. It comes from experience with God. Sister Griffith used to say, Sister Griffith from Britain, she used to say, you don't learn strong faith in comfortable surroundings. I want to repeat that. She said that to me years ago. You don't learn strong faith in comfortable surroundings. And she said something that we used to say, say, Lord, give me the patience of Job. She said, well, if you want the patience of Job, you got to go through what Job went through. You can't get the patience of Job without going through what he went through. So we got to be careful how we pray. Because, Lord, give me the patience of Job. You're asking him to give you the trials that Job went through. You don't mean that. You don't mean that when you say it. You mean, you, Lord, help you to be patient. But you see, he give you the patience of Job. Because you know Job the real patient, but you know Job only learned patience because of what he went through. Are you willing to go through what Job went through? But you see, our experiences are designed to build our faith. Sometimes you don't know you have that faith until you have to go through the experience. You know, I always used to pray, Lord, I don't ever want to go in the hospital. I heard so many things about QEH. I never want to go there. 
And then 2014, I had to go there. I was so terrified. Believe me, I was so terrified. You know, your prayer and everything, but I was real ter terrified. When you think somebody putting you to sleep and that cutting you up and, and that kind of thing, I said, Lord, then it, you don't know if you're going to wake up out of that thing fairly. And that night before that surgery, I didn't sleep. The wind blew through the window, and every time my pajamas are so. And I did. You want morning to come, but I still didn't want morning to come. And I did think about when, when that um, trolley come in, the early coming with trolley. I was so. Every minute I looking for anything, and I didn't see when it come in. A nurse friend of mine came, and she was talking to me. I here when it turned the door and come in. But God. Hallelujah. God brought me through. Hallelujah. When the surgeon came back after he saw me, he said, uh, Mr. Billy, this is the first time I see you smiling. I said, yeah. You know we had to go through. But that wasn't a smiling matter. That was serious. I could smile now. You know? And then he opened my eyes and he looked around and see, I really good. So I could smile. So we need a faith that will stand will stand the test of time, an unshakable faith in an unstable world. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for everyone who have been in place to hear your word. Father, you said that your word does not need any editing. It is already settled in heaven. We pray, God, that you would convey to the hearts of every listener. God, you know our particular circumstance. You know the conditions. You know what we face. Lord, you know the extent of our faith. You know, oh God, those of us, Lord, who may be struggling tonight with a particular issue, a particular problem, with a particular stronghold. Lord, some things that we have been wrestling with, even as believers. And God, it seemed to be having the upper hand over us. We pray even now, God, that we would submit it. Lord, that we would not come to the place where we cast away our confidence. But Lord, that we would have the patience, the endurance, because, Lord, there's the reward at the end. Father, we are reminded tonight that we are not of them that draw back. Lord, but we are those that believe to the saving of the soul. And, God, that is where we want that our anchor be, in the saving of our souls, the souls of our loved ones, our family, our friends, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. continue to know touch our brother another time that when he give out you know that we would be blessed and encouraged to go every step of the way our closing song is you are god alone will you stand please you know in this word in this word it say unshakable hallelujah we are glad tonight 
You're not a God created by human hands. You're not a God dependent on any part of man. You're not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You're not a God created.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You're unshakable. You're unstoppable. That's who you are. You are God alone. We thank God for coming in amongst us. We thank God for being with us. We thank God for who he is. We just believe and we know what we believe. Tonight we were challenged to know what we believe in. If we are going to stand fast, we have to know what we are going to stand fast in. So we pray that every soul tonight would have heard something to challenge you to stand fast. Because that's what we are asked to do. And this time we are going to ask Sister Eurus to come and give us the closing prayer. Sister Eurus in it. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Heavenly Father, we just want to praise you, God, because of who you are, Lord. We know that none can compare to you, Lord God. You are the only true and living God, Father, Lord God. We want to thank you so much, oh God, for being here with us, oh God. Let your Holy Spirit come in and mingle with us, oh God, Father, and touch us and lift our hearts, oh God. Oh, how we praise you, God. We praise you, Lord God. We praise you, Father God. You said in your word, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Your name is to be praised, O oh God, and we have praised you, Father, Lord God. In this hour, Lord God, we have praised you, Lord God. Father, Lord God, we truly know, we truly know how it feels, O oh God, Father God, when you have moved amongst us, when you have touched our spirits, O oh God. We just want to bless you and give you thanks for who you are. Thank you so much, O oh God, for bringing us into your house of worship, O oh God. And Father, Lord God, help us to sit, O oh God, Father, and hear your word, O oh God, your word that came from you, Lord God. We pray, O oh God, that it touch our hearts, O oh God, Father, Lord God, that something remain within us, O oh God, to carry us through, O oh God, Father, until we come again, Father, Lord God. Help us to keep our eyes upon you and continue to look to you, Father God, from which comes our health and strength. It comes from you who made heaven and earth, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we pray as we get ready to leave this place, your house of worship, to go to our dwelling place. We pray, O oh God, that your Holy Ghost Spirit go before us, O oh God. Shield us from accidents seen and unseen, O oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to be in complete control, O oh Father God, as we leave this place, O oh God. Go before us, O oh God, and take us home, O oh God, I pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, and we bless you and we praise you for all things and for everything. In Jesus' name, I pray of thanksgiving. Amen. Let's say the benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a pleasant night. Amen.